Okay, so I'm not sure exactly where this video uh, belongs, so I'm going to just lead off uh, chapter 8 with it because it seems like a good enough place to put it. We're going to be talking about area between the curves. And so I want to find this area in this region right here. And this, this is, I'm just sort of starting off pretty basic, and it should be pretty obvious how I want to do that. If I take, here's this function here, let me uh, do it in this, in red, that function there is 2x minus x squared, and so if I take the integral of 2x minus x squared from 0 to 2 dx, I'm going to find this area here. I'm going to also just do that right now. So that's going to be x squared minus 1 third x cubed. And I'm going to evaluate that at 2 and 0. So if I evaluate it at 0, I'm going to get nothing. Evaluate at 2, I get 2 squared minus uh, 2 cubed divided by 3. And then we'll put a minus 0 in there just to remember it's 0. And I've got 4 minus 8 thirds. So that's 12 thirds minus 8 thirds is equal to 4 thirds. So that area there is 4 thirds. And then if I take the integral of this one from 0 to 2, I'm going to, let's do it in blue. I'm going to find this area here. So I go ahead and I do that. And I get 1 fourth x to the fourth minus 2x squared evaluated at 2 and 0. So I've got 2 to the fourth divided by 4 minus 2 times 2 squared minus 0 if I plug 0 in for that again. Going fast. And so I've got, um, that's going to be 4 minus 8. So I'm going to get minus 4. So this area here is minus 4. But I want to take absolute value. So I'm going to say that this is 4, and this is going to be 4 thirds. And so total area is equal to 4 plus 4 thirds, which is going to be 12 thirds, 16 thirds. Now in general, what I want to do is going to be area is going to be the absolute value of uh, the integral of f of x minus g of x dx from a to b. So I've got some curve, I've got another curve, and so I'm going to call this f of x, I'm going to call this g of x, I'm going to call that a, I'm going to call that b, and so I take f of x minus g of x, I integrate that from a to b, and I find that area. Okay, but that's easy if we're just going from two places where they just sort of cross like that. So let's look at another one here. I've got this function here is going to be x sine x squared and this one here is going to be y equals negative x sine x squared and they're going to cross so if I just sort of if I just sort of do this let me just sort of work it out if I take 
the integral, that's a three pi, that's the square root of three pi. So if I'm going from zero to the square root of three pi of my f of x, minus g of x, so I go, okay, f of x, just throw it in there, x sine x squared minus minus x sine x squared dx. So then I've got the integral from 0 to th square root of 3 pi, 2x sine x squared dx. And then keep going with this. This is an integration by substitution, so I say u equals x squared, du equals 2x dx. That's going to cancel that out, and so I'm uh, being going really, really fast here. And so I've got the integral from 0 to 3 pi, square root of 3 pi um, of sine u du. <coughs> And basically that's going to be negative cosine u. And then I gotta plug that back in, negative cosine x squared. And that's gonna be evaluated from zero to the square root of three pi. <clears throat> okay, so now I've got negative cosine square root of three pi squared minus minus cosine of zero squared. And so I've got negative cosine three pi plus cosine zero. And so I've got cosine of three pi is going to be, uh, well, let's see, that's negative one. So that's gonna be negative one times negative one is one plus one equals two. So that whole area equals two, but that's incorrect, okay? That whole area does not equal two because I had some cancellation because when I look at it, here, this part is above, and now it's below, and now it's above again. And this is below, now it's above, now it's below again. So we're gonna get some, so this part is gonna be positive, this part's gonna be negative, this part's gonna be positive again. So I can't just do bam, bam, bam. I can't do it all the way and say that's two. What I have to do is I actually have to evaluate I have to go, um, let's see, what do we have? Negative cosine x squared. I gotta go negative cosine x squared, and I gotta evaluate it from zero to the square root of pi, because that's gonna be this part there, square root of pi, square root of two pi square root of three pi. <clears throat> okay, so now I've got minus cosine of pi minus minus cosine of zero. So that's going to be, um, so that's gonna be one plus one equals two. So this area is two. Then I've got to go negative cosine x squared evaluated from root pi to root two pi. And so now I'm gonna get negative cosine two pi minus plus cosine pi. And that's going to be minus one. That's also gonna be minus one. So this is gonna be minus two. So this area here is minus two. 
and then you can probably figure out what's going to happen in a second if I go um, negative cosine x squared evaluated from 2 square root of 2 pi to square root of 3 pi I'm going to get negative cosine 3 pi minus minus cosine 2 pi so that's going to be a plus 1 and that's going to be a plus 1 and that's going to be 2 so this is going to be 2. So now if I'm taking absolute values my total area is not going to be 2 this part's going to be 2, this is going to be also 2, this is also going to be 2 but when I do my calculation this if I just go from 0 to root 3 pi I get some positives in there and some negatives in there the positives and the negatives cancel and then I just end up with this here but what I really want real answer is going to be absolute value of 2 plus the absolute value of negative 2 plus the absolute value of 2 is 6 so that total area is 6 okay so then I guess the last thing that I want to do uh, because I've got it here is let's go back to figure out this one here it looks like this function and this function are heading towards each other it looks like they would end up somewhere and they are and so one of the things you have to do I've sort of given you obvious ones where I've told you where they meet but now we have to figure out where do these two functions meet so in general if you want to find the area between the curves Where do the where do the two functions meet? And the answer is Okay. So I my two functions in this example here are y equals 2x minus 2. minus x squared, I'm sorry, minus x squared, and y equals x cubed minus 4x. So I set them equal to each other. I have 2x minus x squared is equal to x cubed minus 4x. <clears throat> and then maybe it will help if I factor. I'm going to pull a negative x out and I'm going to write this as x minus 2 and then I'm going to pull an x out of this and I'm going to write it as x, x minus 2 x plus 2 so I've basically looked at this and I say ah when x equals 0 when x equals 0 my left and right equals 0 so there's one when x equals 2 there you go so if I plug in 2 here that becomes 0 2 there that becomes 0 so I've got that taken care of and that taken care of and so then the question is um, I just have to look I have to find another one and how about where well this is where we this is where it gets a little bit complicated we're gonna have x cubed minus uh, x plus x squared minus 4x 
minus 6x <coughs> equals 0. Okay, so I just rewrote this here. x cubed moved then minus x squared over to make it plus x squared, did minus 4x, moved that over minus 6x equals 0. I can factor that so 0 equals x squared uh, plus x minus 6 equals 0. Oh, I can do this one. I can do that as x minus 3, x minus 2, x plus 3. Uh, that's supposed to be an x. Okay. So, they're, so these are equal to each other at x equals 0, x equals 2, and x equals negative 3. Okay, so now if I want to find this area here, what I have to do is I take the integral of this function here because if you think about it, I want you to think about that. That is f of x minus g of x. Think about how I got there. There's my f of x, there's my g of x. So this is f of x minus g of x. So I'm just going to integrate that from negative 3 to 0. So I'm going to get 1 fourth x to the fourth minus 1 third x to the third minus uh, 3x squared evaluated at 0 and negative 3. So I get 0, blah, 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 all that's going to be 0, minus 1 fourth of negative 3 to the fourth minus 1 third of negative 3 cubed minus 3 times negative 3 squared. So that's going to be 81 fourths. That's going to be uh, that's going to be minus, that's going to be plus 9 and that's going to be minus 27. And there's a big minus in front of all that. So I've got, um, that's negative 18, negative 18, 81 fourths. So it's going to be 18 minus 81 fourths, that's 20 and 1 fourth. So it's going to be minus 2 and 1 fourth or it's going to be negative, uh, what would be that? That would be negative 9 fourths. And then if I take the absolute value, I'm going to say that this has an area of positive 9 fourths. And then this has an area of 16 thirds. So then the total area is going to be 27 twelfths plus uh, 64 twelfths is going to be 80, 91 twelfths. So the whole area between this curve and this curve that's bounded by them is going to be 91 twelfths. So that's a big long video that doesn't really fit anywhere, but I hope you learned something.